What is good everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today we're going to be going through my SummerSlam 2018 predictions. So you guys will notice we do have a new intro here on the channel and I am so freaking excited for it and happy with it guys. It looks so incredible as you can see it transitions with the stop motion and the figures and it's some of my favorite wrestlers of all time. It's just so great. You know we couldn't fit everybody in there but that intro was made by SM underscore battle underscore stories on Instagram. Guys you gotta go give him a follow. Go check him out. Go get some work done by him. He is incredibly talented. One of the most talented stop motion and editors I've ever seen. The graphics and everything is just absolutely sweet. I cannot wait, you know, for the future projects we're going to do together. He also has a YouTube channel that he uploads amazing videos for that you can also check out. There's a link in the description. Definitely go check him out, guys. Absolute beast. And uh, I definitely had to give him a shout out. He is amazing. And you saw the intro for yourself, guys. Definitely go check him out on Instagram. Check him out on YouTube. And let's get into these predictions. So this Sunday, August 19th, we do have SummerSlam 2018, guys. And let's be real about the pay-per-view. There's not many matches on this thing that many people are excited for. I mean, my God, they it seems like it is Extreme Rules 3.0 or 2.0 or even Money in the Bank. There are so many matches on this card that we saw on the Extreme Rules card that it's uh, quite laughable. It's kind of embarrassing and it's like, my God, SummerSlam does not feel important. Of course, you do have a few matches that, you know, are intriguing. You know, uh, AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe, Daniel Bryan versus The Miz, maybe even an actual match between Jeff Hardy and Shinsuke Nakamura and not like an eight second whatever. But uh, a lot of these matches we saw at Extreme Rules and a lot of these matches we've seen before. So I don't know what to expect. Hopefully, you know, we get a great show. It's going to be a long one. SummerSlam's one of the big four pay-per-views. Usually the second biggest pay-per-view of the year, like a WrestleMania 2.0. So, uh, I'm expecting, you know, them to deliver, but, you know, it's WWE, and I don't know, man. Let, let's get into this card, and uh, hopefully it'll be a lot better than I expect. So, starting out with the pre-show, guys, we do have a mixed tag team match between Cien Almas and Selena Vega taking on Rusev and Lana. Uh, I think it's a shame that Cien Almas and Rusev are on the pre-show. However, you know, this match does doesn't very uh, it doesn't have a lot of build it doesn't have you know a big nothing's at stake really it's just a, a good matchup between two great SmackDown Live performers two of my favorites on SmackDown Live so I expect some good things from this match hopefully Lana you know Lana's improving every week she's actually become quite impressive uh, to me in any way I think she's getting better and better she seems that she is you know passionate about the business and she is grinding and I think her and Selena Vega mixing it up with Rusev and Andrade seeing Almas uh, do not sleep on this match guys I think you should watch this. I hope it's very entertaining like we saw with Rousey and Triple H and so forth at WrestleMania 34. So I would definitely tune into this match. I'm going to go with Rusev picking up the win even though CN almost probably needs it more. I think Rusev Day will prevail. Our second pre-show match guys is the Cruiserweight Championship between my boy Cedric Alexander taking on Drew Gulak and uh, Drew uh, Cedric Alexander is pretty much under the same stipulation that Neville was. You know nobody was on his level and he just held that Cruiserweight Championship for a long time and I think that is pretty much what's going to happen here. I don't see Drew Gulak in the same limelight that I see Cedric Alexander. I just think Cedric Alexander is on another level. I just think that he is the best right now. I think that Mustafa Ali or uh, Buddy Murphy would be a better one to, you know, dethrone Cedric here. So I think I'm going to go with Cedric Alexander retaining the championship, continuing to hold on to the Cruiserweight Championship and lifting it up as he has on 205 Live, making it more relevant. So I'm going to go with my boy Cedric picking up the dub over Gulak. Next up, we have the Raw Tag Team Championship match, but between the B team and the Revival. It's about time that the Revival got a championship opportunity right here, guys. I think it is none other. Like, this is the time. The Revival need to take the tag championships off of the B team. You know, there's a rumor going around that Vince McMahon is going to try to revive tag team wrestling in WWE. Thank God. You know, it's been at a low point for 
pretty much the entire year of 2018. So if they could revive it here, have the revival, take the Raw Tag Team Championships, have Authors of Pain get up in there, and you know bring back Jason Jordan, have an American Alpha, you know re reunite there on Monday Night Raw. It would really give a breath of fresh air to the freaking roster and to the main roster, you know, in Monday Night Raw. So I definitely think the Revival are going to win here. I'm going with the Revival, even though, you know, the B team could win. Um, but I think that, you know, they just don't represent Raw Tag Team Wrestling the way that they should, just with the way they're booked. I think that they're pretty they're pretty good performers in the ring. I just don't, I don't know, man. Revival need to win here. I'm going with the Revival to, to finally capture Raw Tag Team Gold. Next up, we have a singles match between Finn Balor, my boy, taking on Trash Constable constipated Corbin right here and uh, guys my Jesus we've seen this match 162 times they went like over 20 minutes on Monday Night Raw we saw this match at Extreme Rules we've seen them been feuding forever now they're feuding over absolutely nothing we literally saw this feud between Daniel Bryan and Big Cass a few months ago and it's just a rehash of that feud you know you're the small guy I'm the big bully trash piece of bald awfulness and that's pretty much what this feud is and I don't like it you know Finn Balor deserves so much better he should be Universal Champion he should be in the main event he should be going after gold, not dealing with trash. And uh, I thought that we were going to get the demon in this feud. I thought, you know, uh, after their 20-minute match and Constable Corbin beat down on Finn Balor, I thought that Finn Balor was going to, you know, get pissed off, get revved up, summon the demon, have the demon come out at SummerSlam and have your 50-50 booking where Finn Balor lost on Raw, but the demon would prevail, keep the, you know, the demon undefeated, keep the demon looking great, and you would still have Baron Corbin have a loss to the demon, which everybody else does. So it would have worked out perfectly that way. They haven't shown signs of the demon. Uh, if the demon did show up, that would be fantastic, but Finn Balor would have to absolutely win. If Trash Corbin defeated the Demon guys, I can't even fathom how bad I would be upset. I think I would throw, like, I would probably swallow rocks and crap gold out of my butt. I can, I could not handle that if that were to take place. So hopefully, Finn Balor gets the dub anyway. I'm going with Finn Balor to win here. Hopefully not by a roll-up. He needs to have a strong victory. Give him some freaking, uh, you know, excitement. Give him a level of uh, confidence and definitely push him towards some gold in the future because uh, they've built up Baron Corbin pretty well here on Monday Night Raw as of late. So if Finn Balor were to win here, you know, he can move on. And that's what I'm going with. Finn Balor to slam Trash Corbin. Next up, we do have a SmackDown Live Triple Threat Women's Championship match between the worst champion in WWE. WWE Carmella taking on Becky Lynch and Charlotte. I do not know why Charlotte was even added to this matchup, guys. I don't like that at all. You know, she's been gone for a long time, like five weeks. She's been off television. She just shows up, gets a title opportunity, and just steals the limelight away from Becky Lynch in her moment that she earned each and every week. So I could potentially see a heel turn from here from Becky Lynch. Maybe Charlotte wins the championship from Carmella. Carmella goes away forever to never win another championship opportunity. Becky Lynch turns heel on Charlotte, and we have this few going forward, going into Evolution, going into Hell in a Cell, going forward just having a lot better matches and giving you know the women's division on Smackdown Live something to you know hold their head high about and it would just be a lot better uh, hopefully Becky Lynch walks out as champion. She's my favorite female on the roster. I love Becky Lynch to death. She totally deserves this. She hasn't held the gold for forever. It's been like two years I think so she definitely deserves it, but I could see Charlotte winning here. I'm going to go with Becky Lynch, just pleading that Becky Lynch gets the victory. Next up, we have the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship match between the Bludgeon Brothers and the New Day guys. And I expect some great things from this matchup. I believe when the Bludgeon Brothers uh, first formed, didn't they destroy the New Day? They destroyed the Usos. They destroyed everybody in their path. And then after that, they cooled off and didn't do jack S, you know, they didn't do anything at all. And then the New Day has been on fire as of late, guys. My God, just every single week on SmackDown Live, just killing it with the bar, killing it with uh, Sanity, just putting on great matches, guys. And it's just proven, like, New Day's on another level. And uh, I think it is time to dethrone the Bludgeon Brothers right here. I, I think that another championship is going to change hands right here. And I'm going to go with the New Day picking up the victory, maybe you know, disqualification or something could happen, and, you know, we could have this match cultivate at Hell in a Cell or something in a Hell in a Cell Tag Team Championship match, sort of like the Usos and New Day had that one year, but uh, I'm going to go with the New Day capturing the tag titles just because they're the best tag team on SmackDown Live, hands down, guys. I mean, they've proven it each week. They have been setting the freaking world on fire with their matches, and I, I think I'm going to go with the New Day taking the SmackDown Live Tag Team titles off the Bludgeon Brothers. Next up, we have a singles match, which is pretty much a grudge match between Daniel Bryan and The Miz, and I feel like we've been waiting on this matchup forever, guys. This 
the build for this match has been since their career started. You know, there's so many different moments. The promos for this thing and the build of this thing has been pretty good. I've been invested in it for a long time. I think everybody has. And I think these guys are going to give us the story we want in this matchup. I cannot wait to see what kind of spots and what kind of storytelling we get out of these guys. Daniel Bryan, one of the best wrestlers in the world. Miz, uh, you know, he's not the greatest in the ring, but you know what? He, he can make me believe and get hyped for anything. So I think the Miz here and Daniel Bryan are going to tear the house down at SummerSlam. Could potentially be match of the night with the storyline involved and everything. The promos for this thing have been great and I cannot wait to see the one they do for SummerSlam on the show. And uh, this, this is going to be great, guys. I am going with Daniel Bryan. Ooh, never mind. You know what? I'm going with The Miz. I'm going with The Miz. I'm going with The Miz. I'm going with The Miz with shenanigans or something. More build, and maybe it cultivates at WrestleMania or something for the title. I don't know. I'm going with The Miz. Screw it. The Miz wins. That's it. Skull crushing finale. Smash. Miz wins. Next up, guys, we do have a match between Braun Strowman and Kevin Owens in a rematch from their match at Extreme Rules, you know, where Braun Strowman chunked Kevin Owens off the top of the steel cage and Kevin Owens ended up picking up the victory. But this one has a stipulation. The Money in the Bank briefcase is on the line. The Monster in the Bank could lose his contract for a guaranteed title opportunity right here, guys. And I'm going to spill a few things about this. I feel like these guys have been feuding forever. I mean, my goodness. But uh, I love Kevin Owens to absolute death. I like Braun Strowman a lot, but Braun, uh, Kevin Owens is one of my favorites in the world. This man is so talented, and I've always thought that he would fit the Money in the Bank briefcase so beautifully. His character and the guy that he portrays, can you not just see him carrying around that briefcase cutting awesome promos? I mean, the guy is one of the best talents in the world, and I would love to see him capture the Money in the Bank briefcase. You know Jinder Mahal, the modern-day Maharaja, is going to get involved in this matchup somehow, some way. I don't know if Kevin Owens will win, but it is literally disqualification, count out. No matter what, if Kevin Owens gets the win by any means necessary, he gets the Money in the Bank briefcase. So, I mean, this this has got me intrigued because I want to see where they go with it. I don't think they're going to put the case on Kevin Owens, but it is intriguing. I think I'm going to go with Braun Strowman picking up the win because I think that he, it is potentially that he could cash in in the main event, and I just don't see them giving it to Kevin Owens. As much as I would love it, I would mark the F out if that happened. I think I'm going to go with the Monster Among Men beating Kevin Owens here and retaining his Money in the Bank briefcase. Next up, we have the United States Championship match between the champion Shinsuke Nakamura taking on the charismatic enigma Jeff freaking Hardy and uh, I hope we actually get a match out of these two you know Jeff Hardy had the championship at Extreme Rules he got low blow didn't even get a match out of these two at Extreme Rules very disappointing to me so I hope to God we actually do get a match but we already know how this is going to end guys Jeff Hardy is not going to win his championship back Shinsuke Nakamura will retain thanks to this man right here you already know the Viper Randy Orton is going to show up and he is going to cause a disqualification or some sort of uh, DQ finish. And we're going to have Shinsuke Nakamura retain the championship. Uh, Randy Orton is going to attack Jeff Hardy, cost him the matchup. And we're going to have a triple threat or something going into Hell in a Cell or something like that. Maybe uh, Randy Orton writes Jeff off TV. I don't know what they're going to do, but I know for a fact that Randy Orton will get involved in this matchup and cost Jeff Hardy. Next up, we have the Raw Women's Championship match between Alexa Bliss and Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey getting her first championship opportunity in WWE right here, guys. And I would love for her to capture the Raw Women's Championship right here. I mean, Ronda Rousey has really impressed me. You know, when she first came in, I was like, oh, I hate celebrities and wrestling. I know she's a great athlete and a beast, but I was like, you know what? I don't I don't want her in here just stealing opportunities from people. But my God, she's been entertaining. She, she gives a sense of realism to the product, and I just love it so much. I think she has became my favorite women's competitor on Monday Night Raw, hands down, and I, I love her a lot now, and I hope she captures the championship here, and I hope this match ends in like 30 seconds. I hope she comes out, beats the crap out of Alexa Bliss, and we have a Ronda Rousey win. I don't know if it's going to happen. I'm, oh God. I want Ronda Rousey to win here, but just for the sake of my predictions record, I think I'm going to go with, oh my God, man, it's so tough to deal. I've had so many, I've had like, I think I've called a title switch just about on every single prediction, so it's sort of difficult here. But, um, hmm, you know what, I'm going, uh, I'm going Alexa Bliss to retain, that's it. Next, we got the Intercontinental Championship rematch between Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins after that train wreck Iron Man match at Extreme Rules. Guys, where do they go from here? This should be very interesting. Of course, Dolph Ziggler is going to have his man Drew McIntyre in his corner, and Seth freaking Rollins is going to have Dean Ambrose in his corner after he returned to Monday Night Raw. I thought it was a very lackluster return, guys. I don't know. I didn't like the way he did return. I think they could have done it a whole lot better, a lot more creative, but uh, it did 
did add to the hype of the match. Now I think a lot of more people are invested in this matchup. I think that we're going to get a lot of outside interference. I hope we get a lot of back and forth. I think that uh, this thing's going to go two ways. Either Dolph Ziggler is going to retain the championship and we're going to move on. Or uh, I think that maybe Seth Rollins regains the Intercontinental Championship and then Dean, uh, Dean Ambrose turns heel on Seth Rollins. And then we're going to have, you know, our Intercontinental Championship feud moving forward. So uh, that's what I think is going to happen. I'm going Seth Rollins to finally get back his Intercontinental title. Dean Ambrose turns heel on Rollins. And we have a Shield Brotherhood sort of rivalry going into Hell in a Cell and what so with uh, the Intercontinental Championship feud. So I think that's what's going to happen there. My boy Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre will then go into their own singles feud. You know, that's where the, the ties are going to break between the two in this matchup. And then we're going to have a few between these two and a few between those two moving forward. Next up, we have the WWE Championship match between the phenomenal AJ Styles taking on Samoa and Joseph, guys. And I'm very interested in this match. I think they've done a great job of building this thing up. You know, they've made it very personal. They've had some great promos going back and forth between AJ and Samoa Joe. So I cannot wait, guys. I used to not really like... Joe, I used to think he was pretty boring, but I don't know, man. Here in the last six, eight months, he has really turned it on, and ever since he came back, it's been like, I don't know, I've really been invested in Joe, so I cannot wait to see how this match goes. You know, I hope that we get a barn burner. I think they're going to give them 20, 25 minutes, hopefully, to uh, tell their story and go hard. I, I don't think this will be the end of this rivalry, but I think AJ Styles is going to retain the WWE Championship in a great match. Hopefully, we get, you know, a lot better feud here from AJ and Joe than we did with AJ and Nakamura. And I just think that AJ will retain the WWE Championship. I would love to see this go on last, but we know that that's not going to happen, guys. But I'm going to go with AJ Styles to retain. And then for our main event, we have everyone's favorite few, guys. We have the Universal Championship rematch for the 18th, 7,000 millionth time. Brock Lesnar taking on Roman Reigns. You know, this feud has been, it's been. That's all I can say, really. I mean, we've had a, like, so, like a roller coaster of emotions just up and down. Paul Heyman turning. Uh, we got Brock Lesnar turning on Paul Heyman, but he didn't turn on Paul Heyman. Is, uh, is Paul Heyman doing a double swerve? Is he going to align with Roman Reigns? Roman Reigns turn heel, win the championship. Uh, Brock Lesnar go to UFC. I mean, there's so many different things that can happen in this matchup. I can say that, that this match is totally unpredictable. I can see Brock Lesnar legit winning this matchup going off the UFC and us never seeing the Universal Championship again. I could see Roman Reigns winning the championship, turning heel, losing the championship, turning heel, uh, winning the championship and continue to be a babyface, aligned with Paul Heyman as a heel. I mean, we could see Braun Strowman potentially cash in after Roman Reigns wins. I think that's probably, you know, the biggest thing. But I, I'm going to be honest, guys. I think that they're going to give us a freaking... Oh, my God. This match is so unpredictable, to be honest. I, I really do not know what to predict here. Uh... I've heard that this match could last 15 seconds. I think Superman punch, Superman punch, spear, spear, spear. Roman Reigns gets the dub. That's a legit thing that can happen. It can also go the other way. It could go Brock Lesnar, F5, 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 suplex, suplex, F5, and be over. And I've heard that it could go 25 minutes. So, I mean, I really have no idea what to predict for this matchup. I really just want this thing to end. I want the Universal Championship on TV each week. I want it on a guy who's going to be a fighting champion and be there and represent the champion championship and Monday Night Raw well, but I don't think Roman Reigns is that guy, so I'm, quarter, so I'm sort of stuck on this. I really don't know what to predict here, but I think the crowd is going to poop on this match regardless. Unless they give us a uh, freaking something that we haven't seen, which I don't think they will, uh, I think the crowd is going to totally hijack this match, not be invested at all, and we're going to see what we saw at WrestleMania where they're just going to chant stuff, throw beach balls, do the wave, not give a single crap, and uh, yeah, that's uh, my final prediction for this matchup is going to be the big dog. You know what? It, this this is the safest bet right here. The big dog wins the Universal Championship finally. That elusive Universal Championship. He freaking wins it. This is what's going to happen right here. He wins and then brrr, and whatever the hell. He uh, cashes in on uh, Roman Reigns right here. Uh, Roman Reigns loses. Money in the Bank briefcase gone. Freaking Braun Strowman gets in here, and he's your new Universal Champion. And we have a face Braun Strowman, and we have a newly turned heel the next night on Monday Night Raw. 
Roman Reigns comes out, cuts a promo, turns heel, beats the crap out of Braun Strowman, tries to kill him, and that's your feud going into Hell in a Cell. Braun Strowman versus a heel Roman Reigns, and I don't know where we go from there, but I think that's the most safest and, you know, the most accurate way to predict this thing. And that pretty much does it for my SummerSlam 2018 predictions. Guys, thank you so very much for watching. Again, uh, the guy who made my intro, SM underscore battle underscore stories, is an absolute beast. I hope you guys enjoyed the intro. I hope you enjoyed the video. Definitely go check out his channel in the link in the description below. Comment below what you thought of the intro and leave me your SummerSlam predictions because I love reading those things and, you know, communicating with you guys on what you guys think. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.